Now, do you actually need to go to college to be a composer? I mean, after all, there's a lot of stuff to learn. Ear training, music theory, counterpoint orchestration, audio production. Cute music composers, they have educated ears. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. There's also that social aspect of being part of a community of composers, musicians, and faculty that's very difficult to replicate on your own. Now, having gone through 12 years of composing at the collegiate level, I can tell you that I have firsthand experience of what the advantages and disadvantages are of being part of the academic system. So today, let's dive into the pros and cons that I've observed about being a composition major, starting with pro number one, and that's of course gonna be access to musicians. I mean, this is unparalleled. When you're at a music college or a conservatory, of course, the first thing you're gonna notice is there's gonna be a bunch of people walking around with these instrument cases, with flutes and oboes, clarinets, violins, double basses. You know, this is gonna be the biggest resource for you as a composition major. So for example, my piece, My for String Quartet and Electronics, is a little piece that I wrote while I was at USC. I was a junior at the time. And if I didn't have musicians there to play the piece, it wouldn't have gone on to win awards and be played multiple times, and of course, get back-end residuals through ASCAP. So it's very important to make use of the musicians you have around you while you're in school. I'll give you another example. While I was at Juilliard, I had a piece called Command Fantasy for violin and piano, which, again, another project that I just wrote. No money, no commission, no, no nothing involved with it. It was just a project that I did for some friends while I was at Juilliard. But that piece went on to be played many, many times and has gotten a lot of residuals for me in the back end as the years progress since I wrote the piece in 2014. So it's very, very, very important to make sure that you are collaborating with musicians while you are at college, thinking that, you know, these pieces might live on for many years, way beyond what I ever thought they would live to. So this collaboration with individual musicians you're gonna meet at college actually segues quite well to pro number two, and that's access to ensembles and orchestral wind ensemble readings. Now that being said, not every single school is gonna allow you to work with their orchestra or their choir or their wind ensemble. It's kind of done by a case-by-case -case basis, whereas some other schools actually have programs set in. For example, the Curtis Institute of Music, the Juilliard School, the USC, a Thornton School of Music, and I can go on and on with some other schools that have actual set reading programs that you can actually write for. So this is just something to keep in mind as you're thinking about which college, if college is the right step for you. For example, while I was an undergrad at USC, I had the opportunity to participate in the new music for orchestra readings that the USC Thorne School of Music was offering every single year. This reading was an invaluable experience for me because there would have been no way that I could myself can organize 60, 70 student musicians in a room and not only do that, but conduct them myself. And then on top of that, actually organize a live performance of the work. So these readings that you can participate in while you're in college are extremely invaluable. And then while I was at Juilliard for my master's degree, I got to participate in another one of these reading opportunities, and that was with the new Juilliard Ensemble, which is a smaller ensemble of about 15 players. The piece I wrote was called Takt, which I later orchestrated for a big orchestra, and that piece has gone on to have a lot of performances, win a lot of awards, and most importantly, get a lot of residuals in the backhand for ASCAP royalties. So as you can see from my first two pros, the most important thing so far is that access to humans, that access to individuals and ensembles to perform your work. Which leads us to pro number three, which is the non-human element of all of this, the access to facilities, practice rooms, and recording spaces. Now, once you go out to the real world, you'll quickly find out how expensive things are, especially with the cost of inflation and all the rest. So it becomes really important to actually use the facilities that the college provides you, whether that be the practice rooms. I know at least for myself, I would actually be composing in the practice rooms rather than composing in my apartment. Or using the recording facilities, using the microphones, those things can be really expensive as you know, using the interfaces and using the really nice live rooms that they have that are carpeted with nice acoustic paneling. If you try to do all this yourself on your own, it could get really expensive really fast. Now with all that being said, let's move on to pro number four, and that's gonna be your mentorship from the renowned composers that you're going to study with while you're at college. So at least for me, I know that I was very lucky to study with some of the best and brightest composers out there, 
whether that be Donald Crockett, Frank DeKelly, Stephen Harkey, and Bruce Broughton. And then heading over to Juilliard, I had the pleasure of studying with John Corleano for a couple of years. And then over at Columbia for my doctorate, I studied with Georg Friedrich Haas, George Lewis, and Brad Garden. So it's really important to make sure that you have not just a mentor, one singular mentor at college. I think it's really important actually to have a plethora of, of voices in your head, uh, not all at the same time, of course, but at least one every couple of years or one every single year. That way you have a lot of different uh, perspectives about what makes a composer a composer, what makes music music, what can life look like. Ask them, what's your life like? Get personal with them. You never know, maybe they don't want to talk about it, maybe they do. Ask them, what is their process like? What's their day-to-day -day like? What is it like to be a composer you know, when they're 40, 50, 60 years old? You know, it's going to be very difficult to interact with people like this unless you're in a college environment. So take advantage of it while you're there. Now, as you might have guessed, it's not all peaches and cream to be part of the academic system. If we just take a sampling of some of the major conservatories and colleges in the United States alone, you'll see that the tuition costs are quite exorbitant. Some are 40, 50, even $60,000 a year. And that doesn't even factor in the cost of boarding, food, travel, anything else that you might need while you're in college. The good news is that there is scholarship and financial aid available, but the problem with that is it's very murky how they decide who gets a scholarship, who gets financial aid, and you often don't find out until pretty late in the process. And even if you get financial aid in the form of loans, that to me is a burden that's a little bit too much, especially for a music major to take on, let alone just a composition major. It's not like you're going into finance or going into law or going into medicine or engineering or any of these things where a person is expected to make a, you know, a considerable income right after graduating from college. Composition and music in general is not like that. So for me, taking out a loan to go to college is not something that I would you know, advise my students to do, but many of them do do that at the end of the day. But of course, you know, I can't control everything that my students do. But let's say we solve this tuition problem. Maybe you have some inheritance stashed away you didn't know about, or a rich uncle came in to help fund your composition journey, or maybe you decided to take out a loan after all, or maybe best of all, you got a scholarship to go to the college of your choice. This still leads us to con number two, which is that while you're at college, especially those first couple of years, you're going to be taking a lot of general education classes, a lot of distractions, a lot of activities outside of the music school that are just going to present themselves. You're going to be 18 years old, oftentimes, you know, first time living away from home, and you're going to have just a lot of things that you're going to want to do. So the problem becomes, when do you actually have time to sit there and write the music? The amount of just sheer discipline you have to have to be 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, especially as an undergraduate major, to carve out time to be alone and get your ideas down. I have to say, at least for me, it was extremely difficult. And I had to really come up with a plan throughout the week. Okay, I have to sit here and actually write the music. I don't care if I'm inspired or whatever it is, I actually have to carve out time to do this. Now I'm just here sitting in my basement, getting all riled up myself listing these cons, which leads me to con number three, and that's the unhealthy level of competition, which could lead to some severe anxiety while you're in college. Now, of course, you don't have to be in college to experience anxiety. You can experience anxiety doing all sorts of different things. But the interesting thing about anxiety, and especially in college, is that you have many people in a tight space that are all around the same age, all trying to achieve similar things in a similar part of their life. And that itself could be the thing that triggers some of the anxiety itself. The crucial thing is to make sure that you have a support system around you while you're in college, whether that be your parents, your close friends, friends that you make while you're in college, your teachers, your mentors, and to always be talking about things, talk about how you're feeling. It's really important to make sure that all that stuff is out there. At many of these institutions, there are gonna be counselors that are gonna be there in case you need them. And of course, many of these institutions have counselors and therapists that are gonna be there for you in case you need them during your journey. Now with all that being said, do I still think that college is a worthwhile opportunity for a composer? Well, if you approach a degree like a series of short-term goals, I can see how your money, time, and effort 
can eventually bear fruit over this process. But if you spend your time not actively being engaged with the resources that I mentioned earlier in this video, you can easily put yourself at a disadvantageous position by the end of your degree. Remember, being a composer, unlike a performing musician in many respects, is a long game. In my view, it takes much longer for a composer to even approach getting good at composing, especially when you compare it to the time and effort it takes a musician to master their instrument. So be kind to yourself, set reasonable short-term goals, and most importantly, keep on writing.